In a previous video, which I hope you saw, I mentioned how you can take an amp meter and multiply the scale by a adding extra turns through your probes. I didn't really talk much about conventional watt meters, so I thought I'd do so in this video. Now, if you take a look here, we've got a watt meter that's actually measuring the power that this TV is presently using. And if you'll notice the scale on that watt meter, it keeps jumping around. And the reason it's jumping around is because of the fact that this TV scene keeps changing. It requires different amounts of beam current, for example, to light up the picture here. So you'll notice the brighter the picture, the, the higher the uh, power consumption goes. Now this can be extremely valuable, and I'll give you a real case history of something I just encountered. Now last week a woman came in and she just gave me this television. She said she didn't want it because the sound would distort after leaving it on for about a minute. Now normally I'd have to take out my circuit tracer and do a few voltage tests to find out what was wrong and I thought maybe it was a bad capacitor. But in this case all I did was look at the circuit board and I noticed the audio I see was running extremely hot. I just put my finger on this heat sink right here and it was excessively hot. So even though some components will run a little bit on the warm or hot side, you can't always go by that. But in this case it was easy enough just to swap ICs and that took care of the problem. Well before replacing this IC, I plugged the TV in and I, I took a look at the uh, power it was consuming on my uh, watt meter here. And of course I had to uh, disconnect the antenna because you can't have a changing picture like I do here or this watt meter jumps all over every time you get a scene change. But anyway, I took a reading and uh, after replacing the IC, I ch checked it again and it started drawing, I think it was around 5 watts less. Now that's not a, a lot of power, but that 5 watt difference was the difference between the TV working correctly and not working. So that's one way a, a watt meter can be extremely valuable. A lot of times when components go bad, they will draw too much power. And it's, it's nice if you have, uh, you know, something you can actually monitor the power you're using. Or let's say that you replace a uh, bad component and maybe you use a generic transistor, you're not sure if you use the right one. You can always just double check uh, your, with your watt meter and see if it's drawing excessive current. Also, you know, check for excessive heat. Although I have seen some poor designs where the components do run a little bit hot, so I don't know if you can always go by the heat. Now you might notice on my watt meter I have a choice of scales, and this is important. Right now, for example, I've got it switched up here to 115 watts, so if the needle here pegs out at the end, the TV would be using 115 watts. If I flip it to the middle position here, right now the full scale would be 345 watts, and if I flip it to the very bottom, we're looking at uh, 1,150 watts. Now the reason that's important, let's just say that there was a TV was using excessive power, maybe only a 5 watt uh, difference. I wouldn't be able to see it if I had it on the small scale, so if I flip it up here to the uh, when full scale is 115 watts, it's easier to see any fluctuations. Now by flipping scales here, I'm essentially doing what I tried to show in the previous video where I mentioned how you can take a standard amp meter and wrap a few extra turns from the AC cord in between the amp meter and your load, or your TV in this case, from your AC line. So watt meter is much better, but if you're on the poor side and can't afford one, and this is one way to improvise, of course to figure out your watch you need to multiply the current you're using times the voltage that's, uh, in this case it's 110 or 120 volts. And of course, as I mentioned in the previous video, a watt meter is uh, very handy to have in conjunction with your variac, so you can vary the power going into your loads. In this case I've hooked it up to the light bulb, so the light bulb would be considered my load. So you'll see when I turn up the power, naturally the light consumes more power and you can see it on the watt meter. Well, let's just say that instead of having it hooked up to a uh, light bulb here, I just got done fixing a television and I wasn't sure if everything was okay in the power supply. I thought maybe there was another short. So I could turn up the power slowly. Let's say I turned it up to maybe 10 volts and all of a sudden the meter pegs out and it, it is already drawing, you know, uh, 115 watts. I can assume that something's wrong and I need to go back and do some more troubleshooting before I fully turn up the power. 
Another extremely important use of a Variac is for testing voltage regulators. Now this TV chassis here didn't come out of an LCD TV, but nevertheless the same principles still apply. A lot of times you'd have a component go bad, like a horizontal output transistor, and it would damage the voltage regulator along with it. And the way you test the voltage regulator is by hooking your meter up to the output side of the voltage regulator while slowly turning up your power on your Variac to see if the voltage regulator regulates the voltage as it's supposed to. For example, I might turn this be between 90 and 120 volts and I shouldn't see much change on my meter. My meter should stay constant at let's say 130 volts. But if I see it's jumping all over, it's jumping down to 90 volts and you know back up to 130 or maybe even a little more, I know that something's wrong. So that's another important use of having a Variac. In this video I want to talk about something you want to seriously consider when working on any electronic equipment. That's a possibility that you can actually ruin it by the static electricity that builds up on your own body. Now I've been hearing for years that it's a good idea to wear a ground strap when you're working on electronic equipment and I've ne never taken it all that serious until the other day I got up out of my chair and touched something and blew out a component. I was surprised that it actually happened because somehow I just I guess I must have thought it was a myth or something, that this sort of thing never really happens. But from what I understand, MOSFETs are very sensitive, and uh, you, you can easily blow one of those up. What I did was I set up a little experiment here where I put a neon light on the end of the antenna here. And I'm going to show by the simple act of sitting in this chair back here for just a couple seconds, getting up and touching this light, I can actually cause it to light up. Now you can see right now I have no charge on me. But if I go back here, I'm just going to sit here for maybe four seconds, get up, touch this light, ouch. I don't know if you could see that light up, but it actually came on for a second. Another place you could pick up static electricity was just brushing against the TV that might be in your shop. You watch here, it, well it didn't work that time, but it came on earlier. Um, it could be the simple act of putting on a jacket or taking off a jacket or stepping out of a car. A lot of you have been shocked when you step out of a car. So, for what it's worth, if you're working on sensitive electronic equipment, by all means, take the precautions you need to.